now see what this little one and a half litre three cylinder engine will do shall we let's put it in sport mode oh hello oh, oh I'm gonna like this Hey guys and welcome to Petrol Ped. Now, one of my automotive guilty pleasures, apart from the Skoda Yeti, is the original Ford Puma. I don't know what it is about that car, I've always liked it. I even saw one at a motor show once many years ago that had been basically played with by Ford Motorsport and it had the underpinnings of an Escort Cosworth and it was fully rally prepared. Utterly brilliant looking thing. So when they bought out the new Ford Puma, it's a car I've been very keen to get my hands on. And I know it's been out a while, but I've been waiting for the ST version because my current favorite Ford is the Fiesta ST, an utterly sensational little thing, a real pocket rocket. Well, behind me, finally, is the new Ford Puma ST in mean green. I've got so much to talk about with this car. I cannot wait to get it on the road and start driving. But let's just talk around it before I do that. Now, first things first, I wanna give a big shout out to Hendy Ford of Portsmouth for letting me play with their new demonstrator. Now, because of the current lockdown restrictions in the UK, their showroom is closed to customers. However, they are still doing online buying and click and collect and the service department is still open. So <laughs> I just wanted to kind of get that out there. So. This wasn't being used very much at the moment, so it's brilliant to be able to play with it for today. Unfortunately, today, the weather is utterly shocking. It's a horrible light drizzle in the air, terrible for getting spots of rain on the lens, so apologies for that in advance. First things to say about the new Ford Puma then is it is a crossover format, and that's either gonna float your boat or it's not. Um, so it's a much higher, raised up car than the little Fiesta ST, but underneath the bonnet is the same power plant as the Fiesta ST, a little 1.5 litre, three cylinder engine producing 200 horsepower. I think the looks of the car, if you like your crossovers, are quirky and fun. And in this mean green, and yes, that is the actual colour of the paint, in this mean green colour with black trim and black roof, I think this car looks absolutely spot on and I really like the wheels as well. Front end, I think the thing that dominates the front end, clearly we've got the ST badge on the front, is it's got a full performance splitter which just adds to that sporty look. And around the rear, pretty good too. I'll talk more about the spec of this car a bit later, but it's pretty much had every option ticked, including the rear privacy glass. And that works so well with the black roof and the black detailing around the windows. Smoked glass on the rear lights, black Puma writing. It just looks so cool. Um, it's got a lovely twin exhaust. I am not a fan, however, of, of this kind of uh, shape here on the rear valance. Either stick another double exhaust in there, which would make this car look epic, or don't bother because it just, I don't know, it just doesn't look right for me, but I am being super picky. I do like the rear of the car a great deal. Now, this crossover format should afford me a little bit more interior cabin space. So let's take a seat in the back and see how much leg room a leggy git like me has. By the way, one thing that's worth mentioning, not only are these alloys really lovely to look at, but they are shod with Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. Awesome. That's all that needs to be said about that one. Right, see how much space there is in the back. <laughs> uh, not as much as I'd hoped is the simple answer to that. Uh, this seat is set for me as a driver, so it is quite a long way back. It isn't massively spacious in here. The headroom is not as much as I thought either. This car has a pan roof, but my head's actually rubbing on the headliner. So, but it is a very compact kind of crossover car. I didn't expect it to be massive in the back. It's not a family estate, put it that way. I wonder what the boot space is like. I wonder if you can get two dogs in the boot. The acid test. Maybe the most important test on Petrolped. 
So, can you get two dogs in the boot? Yeah, of course you can. Hello, girls. Now, it must be said, it's not the biggest boot in the world, um, and it has the world's most flimsy and potentially most rubbish parcel shelf as well. However, it does have a trick up its sleeve. And in order to show you the trick up its sleeve, these two are gonna go and play in the garden. Go on, <laughs> off you go. Whoa! Because inside or underneath this boot liner is what Ford called the mega box. And it's basically underfloor storage, but it's very cool because it's waterproof. You can basically put, I don't know why you would want to put water in there, but it's a, it's a huge, huge storage area. So yeah, pretty good. But yeah, this, this is, uh, mm, yeah, just waiting to break basically. I really don't like it at all. In fact, I was watching Rory's video the other day and he actually snapped it off. Uh, and that goes up there somewhere. I think, like that, and that goes up there. It's, it's one of these things, I think, the, the boot liner design department thought way, way too hard about it. Way too hard about it. Now, what's it like on the inside? First thing to say, Ford are certainly upping their game on the interior front because this is a really nice interior. There are a few things I'm not a fan of, but on the whole, the choice of materials in here is lovely. Let's start with these seats. They look amazing. They've got very high bolsters on them, but they are quite firm. And I'm not sure how comfortable they would be on a long journey. Sadly, I'm not gonna have the opportunity to fully test that out. This steering wheel is nice and you can get into a really nice, comfortable drive driving position. Let me start the car. So we've got a nice TFT screen on the instrument binnacle and a nice flashy ST performance logo appearing on that screen. I'm not a fan of that screen at all. Um, the way it just sticks up, I've said it a million times on the channel, I just don't like that design ethos when it comes to screens. As it happens though, the whole infotainment system in this car is a really good one. I like the Ford Sync system. It's, a, it's really easy to kind of navigate your way around. You've got a nice set of buttons for all the climate control systems and this car has been specced completely. Uh, it has the upgrade Bang & Olufsen stereo system, heated seats, heated steering wheel. It's beautiful in here. Um, all the way around the, uh, the side is this kind of almost like a faux carbon fiber detailing leather on the door cards. It's just really, really nice. But the thing that we need to talk about is that this car is a six speed manual transmission. And what's under the bonnet, this little 1.5 litre three cylinder engine, I think it's an absolute honey. It's it's revy, it's peppy, it has a fantastic soundtrack. It's a really unique mix. It's got a little bit, of, almost a bit of Audi five cylinder to it. It's got a really lovely tone on throttle. Um, I've got a range of different, uh, of different driving modes in the car, eco, normal, sport and race. And you do that all through little buttons on the steering wheel. But all in all, this cabin is lovely. This car's also been specced with the optional panoramic glass sunroof. Uh, you know me and pan roofs, I would definitely spec that because it lightens the car up a great deal. However, one of the things that the second you get in this car, it's a little crossover. It's a much higher seating position than the Fiesta ST. Um, you do feel like you're sat on the car rather than in it. And I just wonder how that's gonna affect driving dynamics. So I think the next thing we do is head on up the road and put this car through its paces, try out these Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires on some utterly damp, greasy, horrible, muddy roads that are around my area right now and uh, maybe mess up this lovely mean green paintwork as well. And away we go, off driving. Now, first thing to report, I have quite slender hips and my hips are pushing up against those bolsters on these seats. So I think if you were of a larger stature, you might find these seats a little bit uncomfortable. And I've already mentioned they are quite firm. That said, they do provide a huge amount of support. 
which I like a lot. So I'm starting off in normal mode. Um, when I drove back from the dealer this morning on the dual carriageway, I did actually stick the car into eco mode. And I was hugely impressed because I was getting about 45 miles to the gallon because one of the things this little three-cylinder engine does, unbelievably, in eco mode is cylinder shutdown. So I was basically running as a two-cylinder car. Um, as an owner, I would use eco mode purely on a dual carriageway on a long run. I wouldn't use it on a road like this. I wouldn't even use normal mode on a road like this. I'd press the little S button and I'd knock it into sport mode, the display turns red, and the engine no note coming out the back of the car just changes a little bit, and instantly I've got a much more peppy car. Now, before we get to do any spirited driving, I think we should address perhaps this car's potential issue, and that is price. Now, the Pure itself, in basic titanium spec, starts at around about £22,000, which I don't think is too bad at all. However, the ST that we're sat in starts at £30,400, but it doesn't. It doesn't because anybody who buys one of these and doesn't spec the performance pack, which is just shy of £1,000, so that brings the starting price of this car to £31,600. Basically, anybody who doesn't spec the performance pack needs their head testing because the performance pack gives you what makes this car for me. It gives you a Quaif ATB limited slip diff. It also gives you launch control and some shift up lights, which to be honest, I'm not interested in at all. The thing that I'm interested in is the Quaif diff. And when I drove the Fiesta ST, to be able to option a Quaif diff in a car of that particular price point is a mega, mega thing, and everybody should tick that option. It utterly transforms this car. I run a Quaif ATB in my Mini, and it's the best modification I've ever done. And basically, for a thousand pounds, bearing in mind the Quaif diff itself is probably about 800 quid, because I've been to the factory to see them being made, it's an utter bargain. So don't even bother specking one of these without ticking the performance pack option. But this car has a little bit more spec than just the performance pack. It's got everything. In fact, this car has everything, apparently, apart from the tow bar. It has a comfort pack, which is basically a heated steering wheel and heated seats. In this country, I'd suggest that's probably a must as well. It has a driver assistance pack. Now that includes things like adaptive cruise control, winning. It has a technology pack on it, and the technology pack includes the LED headlamps, winning. It has the uprated Bang & Olufsen stereo, and it also has, now it's a 600 pound option, but it has the power tailgate with the auto thing where you wipe your foot underneath the boot and it opens up for you, which when you have two dogs in your hands, it's very useful. Privacy glass is an option in this car. Pan roof is an option in this car and the 500 pound mean green paintwork mean that the car we are sat in get ready for this 35 and a half grand there or thereabouts now that's a lot of money although to be fair it's about a kind of well specced mini jcw and um, that kind of money so i just think it's probably a bit rich maybe five grand less than that and the, they would literally these things would fly out the door but I think the ST trim, that I think that's probably a bit rich for some people. But it doesn't have to be, because just over 30 grand, I think that's a bargain. But if you go mad with your options, that's too much money. Okay. The noise, this little engine, the note it makes is just delicious. There's little pops as well. Nothing outrageous, just little pops. Performance wise, 200 horsepower, 320 newton meters. I believe that's just a little bit up from the Fiesta. But, and this is a big but, it's perfect. Yes, you can get cars with more power than that, but what I love about the Fiesta ST and so far, it's exactly the same in this little Puma, is 
down a road like this, you can fully exploit the engine. You can really give it the beans. There's loads of floods and stuff around here, you know. It's got, it's got such a great little characteristic, this engine. Um, it's pretty quick. It'll do 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds, and it's got a launch control feature, which, to be honest, I'm not going to bother trying today. It's just too wet, and I know I wouldn't get, <laughs> I just know I wouldn't get 6.7. However, this type of car, this size, this power on a road like this is just excellent because you can drive it pretty hard, and you don't find yourself breaking the national speed limit. This is a 60 mile an hour road and I'm doing 60 miles an hour and I'm having a massive amount of fun. differential you have not lived if I didn't have one fitted in this car I'd be getting lots more understeer it's such a damp day it's perfect perfect conditions for demonstrating just what a diff does for you in terms of driving characteristics it's meaning I can get my power on earlier in the corner as soon as I've gone through the apex I'm gonna get my power on and I've got grip it reduces any kind of understeer I might see and it just means that I can exploit all of the power of the car. Honestly, I think, I don't, this is just me spitballing here, but I think a diff like this probably allows you to exploit the power. So actually you're probably feeling like maybe more like 230 or 250 brake. Now let's get up the petrol pedal climb. Come on, baby. Little bit low, dug down in second there. That's fine. I don't expect to have mass. <laughs> now it's massively helped out by these pilot sport 4s tires they are don't need second if i'm gonna do it anyway to see if i can I would. I thought because it's got a slightly higher centre of gravity, I thought it might feel a bit cumbersome, have too much body roll in those types of corners, and I, I just don't, didn't feel that. It's a really fun little car to drive. It's fun to look at, it's quirky, but it, when you get it on that kind of road, when you get it, when you throw it through corners, it just gives you more and more and more almost gives you more than you're asking for it now the steering the steering is very very direct and I've read a few reviews um, and a few people don't like that for me it reminds me very much of my mini and the way the geometry set up on my mini it's really sharp you turn it in and the front of the car goes I love that characteristic in a car so I'm not going to mark it down for that one and I think the brakes are great as well. I'd heard some things that the brakes weren't so good. I like the brakes. They've got a nice feel to them initially. I quite like bitey brakes initially. And then when you actually hang on them, they make the car stop, which is always an important thing. But all together, coupled together, the gearbox, haven't talked about the gearbox yet. It's got a lovely change to it. But yeah, <laughs> as you can tell, I do like it. It's not a great deal I'm not a fan of, if I'm honest. Let's run down what I don't like first. I don't like that screen. That is lazy design. I don't like iPads stuck to dashboards. And I, I, just, I just will never, ever like it. Having said that, the rest of the cabin in here is really nicely put together. Lovely choice of materials, uh, and that's good. Seats, the seats look great, but I can tell for some 
sizes of driver, I think they're going to be uncomfortable. These side bolsters do, unless you're narrow hipped, you're going to have a problem with them, and they are quite firm. And then that rear parcel shelf, for me, that's, that's just a joke. It's going to last literally a matter of weeks. Um, I would take it out, and, and probably because I've got the dogs up most of the time in cars, I take the parcel shelf out straight away anyway, and don't bother with it. But I do like the mega box. In terms of what I like about it, I love the styling. I think it's quirky. Um, I think it's, uh, and I'm not a massive crossover fan, but they grow on you, don't they? I, I, I do quite like it. Uh, and in this color, again, not for everybody, but I love it. It's great. I think this car, you either have it really subtle in like a really dark gray or black, or you go mad and have it in this fantastic green color. They do a lovely red as well. But the most important thing for me this car is the way it drives. The little six-speed gearbox is superb. Coupled to what fast, very, very quickly becoming my favorite engine. And it sounds great, it revs beautifully, and it's really responsive. It's not got massive torque down low, so some, you have to make sure you're in the right gear, but that's a good thing. It means you have to change gear more often, and you have to be more involved in the drive. The Quave Diff makes this car. It utterly makes this car. Other manufacturers, listen out. Make diff, a limited slip diff an option in your front wheel drive cars, because this and the Fiesta ST that come with a quaff diff from factory, as long as you option it, it just makes the car. It is utterly, utterly brilliant to drive this car. You don't go that fast, don't get me wrong, you go fast, but you don't go so fast that you have to back off. You can just really exploit the car, rev out in, first and second and third and enjoy a decent B road with some twisties even in the wet front wheel drive absolutely brilliant also the fact it comes from factory with Pilot Sport 4S tires that combination of the tires the diff the gearbox and the engine just make this car for me unbeatable it's utterly brilliant and I would and as a mini fan I'd say it's it's up there with any mini I've driven it's brilliant I really, really like it. I knew I would. I knew I'd like it. But I have to say a massive thank you to Todd at Hendy Ford in Portsmouth. Hendy have supported my channel for a long time now, uh, and Todd always reaches out to me when they get new demonstrators, and, and he's the guy that specs the cars as well, and they've always got a great amount of spec on them. So Todd and the guys at Hendy, thank you very much. Uh, but guys, I hope you've enjoyed this one as much as I have. What a cracking little car. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petrol Bed for plenty of content to come. And I'll see you on the next film, guys. And you take care. Drive safe.